Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments with the continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. This is challenge 441. So let's read the problem statement. It says here, generate the integers corresponding to intervals. Okay, doesn't tell us much. Next line, if range is x to y, then all integers between x and y, both included, need to be generated. So if we have 3 to 6, we'll generate 3, 4, 5, 6. If a single number appears, it will appear as it is. The answer should have unique numbers and sorted in ascending order so let's make this make sense so if you use this cell for example 5 comma space 3 to 8 so it means you start up with 5 3 to 8 would be 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay now the next thing you need to check for is that there are no duplicates you can see here that 5 appears twice so let's say we take out one of the fives and then we make sure this is sorted in ascending order and once we have that then we simply do like a concatenation right using a comma space and that would give us the result so if you think about it from a problem and problem statement standpoint it's relatively easy but the execution is a different conversation altogether but that's why i'm here you know to break this down so i'm going to show you you know the building blocks you know to making this work and then when we are done with that i kind of write it in one you know monstrous formula which is what i know a lot of you are here for <laughs> so let's get into it so i'm going to use this cell as my example i think it's more representative than the first one so i will work it out with this and then i will then extend you know to the others so the first thing you want to do obviously is to do a text split right you want to split this text based on a comma space that's the first thing okay so you have two elements five and three to eight next thing is you want to split based on a hyphen this would remain the same primarily here you know you're going to have three and then eight so what i mean is that you're going to do a text split right and you're going to say split based on a hyphen now you have three and eight so you now need to create a sequence that starts at three and ends at eight now the interesting thing is that for the sequence function it doesn't say start end it tells you okay how many elements and then you know start and it can figure it out so the question is how many elements are we going to have here if i have three and eight it's going to be eight minus three plus one right so six elements so basically i can do like a max of whatever i have here i can say max of this minus mean of it okay which is like saying max mean you know plus one so that will give me in this case the six and I'll tell it to start at the minimum of it. The minimum, like in this case, will be three. So that's basically saying start at three and with six elements, it will finish at eight. When you press enter, the answer surprises you, but not me. It gives us a zero. And you're like, what's going on here? Why do we have a zero? It's simple. That's because three and eight are text. They are not numbers. And as you can see from the alignment, they are left aligned. And I didn't do anything here. Okay, so what you need to do in your text splits is to convert them to numbers you can use a double unary right and you do this okay so now you have three you know to eight that's really what you want the five itself you know would have um been split and will still give you the five so you need to now take this five and this three four five six seven eight bring it into one long array you know where you can now look at duplicates because you can't look for duplicates when they are sitting apart so you bring them into one array and then you can do a unique on that you get your unique list you sort it and then you concatenate you know to give the response so now the question is when i'm looking at multiple arrays and i want to stack them all up together you know into one you know array consisting of all the elements from um, you know those different sub arrays what function comes to mind for me it's the reduced function you know that can perform you know an operation on the array and then do the stack so let me say my array looked something like this just for example five seven and nine let's say three five seven and nine where the elements of my array i do a reduce initial value i can use this like an empty string which would be an empty cell ultimately for my array i say this is my array i have explained the reduce function in a lot of detail in you know videos on my channel and i would maybe link some of them in the description and up here you know so that you can you know get you know a lot of detail i think i've done quite a good job with that okay so let's go on then here you go into the lambda portion which has two things you know accumulator and iterator and then we kind of explain what those two things are 
And let's say here, I want to stack all these elements together. So I'm going to do a V stack. A is the accumulator, meaning at the end of every step, A holds the result so far. So if we have 10 elements, at the end of step 1, you know, A will hold the result as at 10. When it gets to the next step, it will hold the result from step 1 and 2 and so on. It's kind of like an aggregator, an accumulator, a running total. Okay, so let me say I do a V stack A and I don't want to just stack, let's say, these elements the way they are. I want to perform an operation on them. Maybe I just square them just for a difference. So I'll say B squared. Now, let's try and make sense of what this is before we see the results. Okay, so what happens is this. A is the accumulator and it always starts with the initial value so the initial value here is like an empty cell so it means the first value you're going to get is just an empty cell now b is going to iterate through all the elements of the array which is this okay which basically is the three five seven nine so it means that b will start off with three then the next time it will be five seven and nine but let's start from the beginning so a would first of all be an empty cell right that's your a now b is going to take the value three when you get to what the expression you are supposed to have at the end of the day is, it says V stack A and B squared. So, which means it's going to stack A, which is an empty cell, with 3 squared, which is 9. So, it means your result at this stage is an empty cell and 9, vertically like that. Okay? By the time you go to the next step, your B is now going to be 5. And that your empty cell and 9 is your A. Okay, so by the time you're coming in this time, your A is now the empty cell and 9. 9 is coming from 3 squared and you're going to stack it with B squared. Now, B is now 5, which is what? 25. So you're going to have an empty cell, 9 and 25. And that's how you keep going until you run out of elements in the array. Now, the good thing about reduce is that reduce is not giving you what's happening at each step. Reduce just looks at the final step. The final step when you have used all the elements in your array, which is the 3, 5, 7, 9. What would you have then? You will have an empty cell. You will have 9. 3 squared, you have 25, 5 squared, you have 49, and you have 81. And it's going to stack them all up together. So that's the result, okay, of the reduce. So if you have multiple arrays, like in our case, say we have this 5, we have this 3 to 8. What we are doing is basically something that looks like this, a V stack. But the only difference is that instead of doing B squared here, which is a very simple transformation, in our example, what we will do, like we did here is we will split each element using a text split to give us this and then we will then do a sequence to give us this and then we would stack it all up together so it's basically the same idea the only difference is that in my calculation instead of just doing b squared which is a simple operation on b in this case we will need to do a split of the b take all the elements you know and then uh, stack them up together so it's the same idea so let's try and get this done you know now okay so let's see um so i'm going to start up you know using a let and i'm going to create a variable maybe called p and p is just going to be a text split of this basically what i did before comma space and let's say i want my output to be p at this point just to see what we have Okay, so you can see that's it, 5, 3 to 8. Nothing special there. But instead of doing P now, I want to do the reduce portion of it. So I'm going to do reduce, initial value, nothing. And then my array, my array is me going through the 5 and the 3 to 8, which basically is this, right? This is what we are, you know, iterating through. We'll look at the 5, we'll look at the 3 to 8, and we'll do some calculations on them. And the result here, what I just highlighted, is basically my P. So my array is P. So I'm looping through the elements of P, which would mean if there are multiple comma spaces here, each of them will be one element, and then we'll perform some calculations on them. Okay? So let's go into the lambda portion. So lambda A, B. All right? And then what do we do? We are going to do a V stack still. It's the same concept. We are going to stack A. A would always be the accumulator. So now, what is the calculation we are really doing? So if you look at this for example here you know b one of the values let's focus on the 3 hyphen 8 so if you were 3 hyphen 8 what would you want to do with it the first thing you want to do with it is to split it so that you get 3 and 8 then you now do a sequence that can create that sequence from 3 to 8 let me just create a variable that will store the result of the split so i can say let maybe in this case i will say sorry about that so i'll say here so I can say let Q be the result of splitting, you know, B. B is like that 3 to 8 based on a hyphen. Don't forget what we had to do also. We had to make this numeric, you know, so that our sequence will work. So at this point, if we did this calculation and 3 to 8 was the um, what we are iterating over, this text split will give us two cells 
or two values three and then eight okay so and that is stored in q and don't forget what we did we had to get max of q mean of q and so that's what we want to do now all right so once we say q q is going to store the result of that so what do we need from it we need to really you know sequence we want to do max of q you know minus mean of q plus one that's the number of elements okay and then we start up at the mean of q always have the three to eight in your mind so this will mean eight minus three plus one six rows and it's going to start at three that's basically what this is so let's just close all the brackets that closes the sequence that closes the let that closes the v stack closes the lambda closes the reduce closes the let <laughs> okay good all right so you can see that we have the result right the first cell here is just because of you know the first element of the reduce which is not a problem which we would handle right so now that we have this you can see it makes sense this five is coming from this five then three hyphen eight is what splits into this if you add another element let's say 12 to 17 you know then this would also split spill as well okay so once you have this you then need to remove duplicates okay so it means that over this reduce you can do a unique function so unique is going to get rid of duplicates as you can see we have five appearing twice here so one of them is going to go okay so now this is fine i could take out the 12 to 17 just so that people don't get it confused okay so that's that so now this is our result next thing we need to do is we want to what sort it so just do a sort and then close the bracket so this is sorted so you almost have what you want but the last step here will now be to concatenate them don't bother with this blank cell because text join has an argument that allows you to ignore empty cells so we can always do that so what i'm going to do at this point here is i'm going to do a text join over this entire thing my delimiter is going to be comma space i'm going to say here i want to ignore empty cells i could you know ignore the argument or just use one for completeness okay and then here close the bracket all right okay so you see that we have the result which if you take down you know you get everything you want but that's not how we are going to extend it to the other cells since we have this whole calculation that works across you know we are just going to say this is just for one cell so we are going to extend this transformation to the other cells so let me show you what we are going to do we are just going to use a map function basically so i'm going to do a map function and say inside of the map what do i want map i'm looking through all these elements so these are you know my array okay so inside of the map then i create a variable which is x so what this means at this point is that x will start off with the value in a2 which for example will be 3 to 7 it will perform this entire calculation on it then it will go into the next one a3 perform the entire calculation a4 and so on right so it means here where you have text split a3 you don't need a3 anymore you can change this to x let's close the last two brackets we need and we should be fine okay now you can see that we have one formula that spews across the entire range and it gives you everything you want so it's not the easiest solution but it's not the most difficult as well the building blocks here really are the reduce function once you understand the reduce and map like the helper lambda helper functions yeah you'll be fine not a lot on map here but just more of reduce but sometimes conceptualizing what is happening inside of reduce is a big challenge but once you can you know cross that barrier uh, then you are good so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please hit like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out